I am back again with more updates for you and more analysis and this is directly going to those who really didn't um, allow um, things to be talking about our different viewers who have really DM'd me they have sent me a direct message to please give an overview on what has been happening in the Labour Party why are pro Peter Obi activities or anti Peter Obi activities going on in the Labour Party why are different issues coming up at a time when the Labour Party needs to be united at a time when the Labour Party and its officers needs to put hands together and fight for an alleged stolen mandate so I have um, a broad explanation for you this time around this is going to be very very long but I beg you what I want you to stay glued to your screen and watch till the end because if you don't watch till the end you won't really understand the factionalism that is going on in the Labour Party right now you wouldn't understand the reason why Julius Abure has been as suspended as the national chairman of the Labour Party you wouldn't understand why Bashir Papa has been announced as the um, interim or the um, caretaker national chairman of the Labour Party and you will still understand why Abayomi Arabambi, who is the factional national publicity secretary of the Labour Party, why he has come on air to say lots of things and point um, accusing fingers at his formal, his friend and formal brother, as he called it, um, talking about Julius Abure, whom he joined the Labour Party with 14 years ago. In this particular video, I tell you what, it's going to be so, so explanatory and revealing because there are lots of informations that you mustn't have really heard in a long while now and this particular analysis and video would um, broaden your mind and expose you to lots of um, information especially those surrounding the suspension the immediate suspension of Julius Abure and um, the internal party activities that have been going on in the Labour Party and the subsequent activities that could go on and thereby cause the Labour Party to lose their allegedly stolen mandate to the All Progressive Congress and to Asiwaju Bola Ahmed Tinubu, the President-elect. Before we do that, I will try to um, give you a throwback video of one of the members of the Labour Party talking about one Dixon Irebu. Dixon Irebu is a staunch member of the Labour Party. He came on air a few days ago to explain and um, this captions thus. Why are internal crises going on in the opposition party this time around? Why haven't this internal crisis? come up before the elections why didn't they come up immediately after the election results were announced why are they coming at a time when um these parties are supposed to stand um unanimous stand in unity stand in unison and fight and reclaim the alleged stolen mandate that these particular parties have been alleged uh, alleging that had, was stolen from them who are these parties talking about the people's democratic party and the labor party so um Iwebu coming from the labor party is talking from the lp point of view and um he came on air to explain briefly why he feels because some years ago sometime in 2015 um the all progressive congress were part of um a, a, a party an opposition party that were pained and felt um their mandate was stolen from them um forward to many many years later in 2023 the All Progressive Congress, who is now the ruling party, cannot contend with other parties as regards a stolen mandate. The APC tend to be in a state of unrest and they feel that this is a time when um, no opposition is supposed to rise against them because um, APC is now the ruling party. But when you rewind uh, back in many, many years ago, you will know that the APC once stood um, in this particular uh, shoes and didn't find it funny. So let us listen to um, Irebu Dixon as he explains and gives reasons why there are plenty anti-party anti activities or um, plenty um, internal um, um, issues going on in different parties. After you watch Irebu, then I will give you a broad analysis where Abayomi Arabambi, the factional um, national publicity secretary of the Labour Party, and then Yunus Atanko, who is the legitimate chief spokesperson of the Labour Party Presidential Campaign Council. They came on, on air on Channels News and had a form of debate. This is just like... Um, a, a Mr. A and Mr. B coming to debate. These are two opposite people from the same party coming to air out their minds pertaining the issues surrounding to the suspension of um, the formal uh, chairman of the Labour Party, talking about um, Julius Abure and the um, subsequent takeover of the interim Labour Party chairman, talking about um, Bashir Akpapa. Let us watch Dixon Irebu 
as he explains why parties are having internal issues at this time around and then i will briefly bring to you the broad explanation and debate of Yunus Atanko and um, Abayo Mia Rabambi on Channels News. Watch Ure will explain this. But we saw the other parties, particularly the ruling party. We saw how disruptive they've been. When they were in the opposition, we saw how they engaged the then ruling party, the PDP. But unfortunately for them now, they are not even able to tolerate the same thing. You know, even though we're not as rancorous as they are, Right or how they were in 2014-2015. We are people who are tired, a people who are tired of the shenanigans of governance of both APC and PDP as we have had before now. What we want is a better nation. Nigeria deserves better. How can it be that after 24 years of democracy in Nigeria, we still are campaigning with the same thing? We will give you water, we will give you light, the economy is in shambles and the insecurity is terrible and all of that. Like stated, and it's a fact, Nigeria has never been this balkanized since civil war. Even up till now, you see the ruling class, the APC particularly, you see what they are doing, dividing Nigeria. They went out there in 2023 campaign with Muslim Muslim ticket without considering that this nation, that there are Christians here and there are Muslims here and that there was a need to, at least for the interest of Nigeria, balance their ticket we didn't see that they don't care all they want is capture power they did that in 2014 2015 they just wanted to capture power what have they done for eight years of capturing this power nothing we have been taken backwards you know very you, backwards you, you, you know. lp is together no amount of infiltration can disrupt what how focused and determined the lp is so you're right. citing there, there is an infiltration? Of course there is an infiltration. We know that the enemy is doing everything possible to put confusion because they were shocked. The ruling party was very shocked to know that, that we had obedient members in their bedroom. There are members of the obedient movement in APC. And that's why even within their own camp, you could see them, you can see them, of course, suspending, expelling and all of that because they got to know that, oh, really, that amongst their within their camp that they still had people who were sympathetic towards this genuine direction that the obedient movement all right you heard it all from um dixon urebu dixon urebu there yeah, took his time to um not only make his grievances known at the all progressive congress at um the way they are t they, they have taken these um issues coming up at this time around this we're not trying to say that the issues taking uh at the forefront in different parties especially the opposition parties is taking the time for the judiciary to make his decision as regards the stolen mandate allegedly by the labor party but we are trying also to say that this is not a time for internal party issues this is a time for all parties to remain so so um, in unison so as to um be in unity and reclaim any stolen mandate if allegedly really stolen by the old progressive congress now let us watch um abayomi um arabambi who is the factional national publicity secretary of the labor party and then um yunus atanko who is the chief spokesperson of the labor party presidential campaign council don't forget i told you that these two people belong to the same party but different factions so it was a form of debate on channels news watch them they have intriguing information taking place in the labor party you will be shocked watch them good morning nigeria once again uh, what is going on in labor party is purely you know our party affairs and uh, this issue started last year in the build up to the primaries of our political parties uh, some candidates that uh, did their primary governorship in uh, enogun uh, by the name uh, Ezeoko emerged as the winner of governorship uh, primary in Enugu, I mean, uh, Ebony State. Why, why, why one more fee emerged also emerged as a, our House of Representative candidate? But uh, suddenly their name was published by INEC, and by the time INEC will release the second batch of the list of candidates that will contest election, their name has been removed. A meeting was called by the NWC, we demanded from the chairman what transpired between now and then, who gave the authority for this name to be substituted? Because they are not dead, and the people are here, they said they were not the one, you know, that wrote letter of, 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 of withdrawal and the avidavid. 
it dismisses this, I mean, this uh, issue, you know, with the way for hand, and that crisis now started, you know, between us. We proceeded to INEC, because in Labour Party, the ideology of the founding father was a quality and social justice. Everybody, we are all equal there, and justice must be seen to be served to all and sundry. We wrote to INEC, Professor Mahmoud replied, that, oh, there were documents submitted by your national chairman, your national secretary, to the commission, claiming that those two candidates withdrew by themselves and that they even sought an affidavit at the SCTI court. We said, okay, we apply for the certified copy of the documents. We proceeded to the SCTI court and we wrote to the registrar, sir, ma, we want certified to copy of what did this document. They call it this uh, governorship election notice of withdrawal of candidates and also the letter of voluntary withdrawal. That was when the court wrote back to us with the certified to copy that those documents were forged by the chief registrar, Lawa Fumilola, director of commission of four departments. Is the court that wrote back to Yes, you? they wrote back, giving us the certified to copy. And that was when we got to know that the chairman and secretary deliberately forged the seal of the court in the affidavit. That is one. They forged this, I mean, the signature and stamp of the commission of oath, and they also produces their own TSA account. Everything is here. That was how that issue started between us. To copy everything here, they are certified to come from the court. Then we have the candidate proceed to court. Here I have, this is the Federal High Court judgment, Apocalypse Division, this is certified to copy, where it was affirmed that the people they claim withdrew, they were not the ones that withdrew, and their documents were forged and presented to their neck, and court directed, remove the name of the people who submitted to their neck, and replace them with the original candidate. This is the Federal High Court. I would appeal with those candidates that it, I mean that it imposed on the party. They proceeded to court of appeal. They and their candidate. They lost at the court of appeal. This is the certified copy of the judgment. The Supreme Court on 28th day of February affirmed the decision of the court of appeal. This is also the certified copy. We ask him, my dear friend, you have to resign. We apply for the IGP that okay, the petition that we wrote. What happened to it? They asked us to apply. I wrote the application to their GP. It was approved, and we were given report of the police investigation. They are also here. We said that the forensic audit they did on those documents confirmed that they were forged. And the four of them that were involved were the national chairman, the secretary, organized secretary, and the treasurer. And that an arrest warrant, I am telling you, has already been issued. For them, they were all here. Sharing argument with Arabambi, the publicity secretary, as all, uh, must be mistaken. It won't happen. What will happen is this. I will just allude to the fact that whatever the internal challenges are within the Labour Party, which he or any other person may be part of, have been issued. Whatever the challenges are, as you reeled out all of these particular documents, it's either part, he was part of it because they are a national executive council, which he is a part of. And at the same time, he knows the constitution of the party, which is very, very clear. These are issues that can be dealt with within the party itself until when the allegation is proved beyond reasonable doubt in the court in which they have gone to. I read out to you section 17, um, article 17 of the party. Permit me, please. Article 17 of the party said very clearly that, um, uh -huh. he said, Article 1, he said, the national chairman of the party may be suspended or removed from office on the vote of no confidence passed by at, at least two third majority of the national convention convened solely for the consideration only of such motion. Very, very clear. 
that is the constitution all of them all of us are here to follow so if there are this particular quantum of allegations and all we have a modus operandi and how these issues can be dealt with but that was not followed it seems to me that it's a targeted attempt apart from the national chairman but targeted at peter obi and Deti baba ahmed because these internal struggles could have been nipped on the board right in the party while we are at the midst of struggling for the soul of Nigeria, led by Peter Obi, we are now being meandered and manipulated within the party in order to challenge the leadership of the party who is at the presence of this particular struggle. And then we are leaving credence to some other thing. I am not alluding to the fact that they have a document that they want to prove beyond reasonable doubt. Prove it at the party. We will deal with our chairman. We have the capacity to deal with the chairman if he's found one. Mr. All of this document, I didn't contradict any of the <coughs> document that they said. And we said it clearly that it's an allegation. When you prove it, then you deal with the chairman. It's simple as shit. Not waive it. Do not waive it at all. It is a heinous crime for you to, <clears throat> to be engaged in forgery in any position of the law. And the party will deal with it according to its own internal organs. Mm -hmm. And that will be done because if you prove within all of us are members of the party, and you bring us such very, very serious document, and you say probably will not deal with the chairman. No, we will. That one is a fact. Okay, well, but I'm only saying that the processes of dealing with the chairman should be followed according to the constitution would cut all of us together. Dr. Dr. We follow the constitution of the party, but Article 7 of our party constitution alluded to a fact that our constitution is subservient to the constitution of Nigeria. So where there is a conflict between any law, edict, or other constitution that is in contravention of the Constitution of Federal Republic of Nigeria, that law will have to be set aside in its entirety and shall be declared null and void. So our constitution is already in contravention of the Constitution of Nigeria. Now, this person, we are not asking him to convey the convention for suspension or removal. No. It is to step aside why we will cause an investigation it constitutionality and all and that is the reason why when the court also said mm -hmm. that there's a stay in action just like the way it was pronounced in benin just like uh, yesterday we had the document saying that you stay action until when you prove your case beyond reasonable doubt when the hearing is being done mm -hmm. on the case so i agree totally so let's subject it to the issue of forensic expert from the court and then deal with this matter internally mm -hmm. i will agree with you totally i will never ever support anybody engage in forgery against the federal republic of nigeria or against any individual mm -hmm. not from my backing and training but also i will not agree to the fact that we will not follow the rudiments of the law we as democrats which is already been ensured because the key issue of democratic standards is the rule of law and engagement well, when I, that I is established a, yeah. and that will make us much easier but then at the same time i make it clear that for anybody within the party <clears throat> to be engaged in these particular challenges here and forth without following the, you should know that the target is beyond the chairman. The mm -hmm. target is against our presidential candidate and the Nigerian state. Well, I agree with you totally. And there have been series of attempts in that regard. He is aware of that. There's been a lot of, in fact, I have confirmed video where both him and some other persons were saying that, okay, we know this thing is targeted towards our principal and all of those ones who bury our sword and deal with the matter internally and all. I have those videos. And that's just to confirm that such attempts were being made within the party. And at the same time, if we have a document that did this, the, the courts are there to prove beyond reasonable doubt as they got to what really transpired, and they will make this particular judgment. Mm. And then the court also will look at all of the documents and say, look, you have been found wanting in this regard. And that is that. And then you must leave that office. That's all I'm just saying. So mm -hmm. but for us to be engaging back and forth on the matter, no. But the rather is going to, you know, uh, alluded to the fact that we are even more a, a credible political party than the one we have. We don't want Nigerians to believe we are going to have, in, uh, let me say, uh, if we won at the court now, we don't want anybody to believe we have a government that will say, come, when you join us, just go and say no more. Once, for the first time, we were the political party that has ever been able, you know, to come out, you know, with the kind of issue against our leadership. Before Pio came, you know, into the party, we have, you know, 
our, our ways of working in line with our constitution. But when all this didn't matter, when all this matter, you know, happened, everything started late last year. Like he said, a lot of moves have been made. But because the chairman, the, the former chairman Fed is above board, he considered himself as the only NWC member. He assumed his the name, his name, his surname is NWC. But we must not just sit back and allow this kind of thing, you know, to wash away. The reason is this, you have the candidate here is a family man. You denied him his right to run for governorship. The other man is the House of Forever Representative member. You deny them the right. We cannot wish all those one away. They are individual. They have their right to run for an election, which they have done. But why must someone just decided that, oh, let me just put a blockade on these people who for a reason being known to him. We have discussed with the chairman. We have met, you know, several times, but he will tell you that there's nothing anybody can do. We say, okay, whether we can do something or not, you will know. That's why we approach it. I think we've been civil to approach FCT court that in the light of all this, my Lord, even the document of the court that was forged was from the FCT. Can this man continue to parade himself? Now I want to set up an investigation panel that is even going to involve them. As you see us here, we are all brothers. We are not fighting with the PCC. And like I said, we are with, you know, Pio. Pio is a man of integrity. I keep saying it. But Abure, the former national chairman, cannot hang such baggage on his, uh, on his neck and think he can just throw into a sort of with Pio. It's not going to happen. In the okay, um, welcome back. In as much as this is not a laughing matter, but um, there are a lot of things to laugh about in Nigeria these days. So instead of staying in pain, I bet you should laugh a bit and then turn serious faces to this particular issue. You heard it there from Abayomi Arabambi and um, Yunus Atanko. These two people are um, the same people from the same party, but are, so, are, are supportive of different uh, party chairmen. Um, this is to say that it is no longer news that the Labour Party is now in a factional sort of situation. And there are people who believe that Julius Abure is still their party chairman. And there are people who have passed a vote of no confidence on the same Julius Abure over cases tabled to a high court in Abuja um, pertaining to forgery, perjury, and anti-party activities. Um, that is that from our table. I will also bring you the part two. I call it part two of this explanation and this analysis still having Yunus Atanku and Abayomi Arabambi. The, the other part two I'm talking about is so, so informative that it uh, closely or it, it came close to causing a sort of stare in the studio. But I would not like you to touch that dial. I would like you to always watch this video to the end. After this particular update, I'm going to bring you another update a few minutes from now for you to have a broader view of what Arabambi and Yunus Atanku said on Channels TV. Thanks for joining us. Don't forget to like, drop a comment for us in the comment section, and don't forget to um, tap the subscribe button because this is Nation's Voice Tower, your most preferred YouTube channel. That makes you updated and gives you information on any issue pertaining to Nigerian politics and abroad. Thanks for joining us. See you next time.